You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 147. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious listening time with me. Ah, today I want to talk about some traps that I find singers letting themselves fall into. And these aren't technique traps, although there are certainly plenty of those. Uh, But these are mindset traps, and these are concepts that I've talked about before, but repetition can be a very good thing. I know my thick head, it takes me many times to really understand something, and even when I think I understand something, when I'm exposed to it again, I, I find myself understanding it in a new way. Uh, so these concepts, especially mindset, uh, mindset concepts, it's so important that we just keep taking stock because there is a gravity of negative thought that we all walk around with. And this, this whirlpool will just suck us in at every opportunity uh, if we were able to put a loudspeaker on our minds and let others hear what's going on in our heads, uh, people would think we're all mad people, that we're all out of our minds. And in a way, we are. The self-dialogue that that we allow to, to happen, that, that our brains inflict on us is, is downright cruel at times. And especially something like singing, where you really have to expose yourself in a way that is unique in the instrument world, because the instrument is you. And there is a level of shame that seems to come with singing when we make a mistake or when we don't sound good that doesn't exist in other instruments. If um, we play guitar and we just happen to play very badly and clonk out a chord, we may say, oh, I messed that up. Uh, I need to work harder. There may be a mild bit of embarrassment, but when the when that happens with the voice, there is something where we start to feel like we're a lesser human being, that there's something wrong with us us. It's, we don't separate the instrument from ourselves. And it's, it's really unfortunate. I think that's part of the power of the voice, that emotional connection and the way we all as humans, because we're so tied into listening to voices, the way we connect uh, with singers, but it's certainly a double edged sword. So um, as I'm teaching, working with students, I, I often see these these same stresses and and fears come up, uh, and it's all forms of self sabotage. Uh, and the first one is the good old age thing. And I've been it's it's really odd. I've been worried about my age since I was a little kid. Um, I would think that I, I've, I've always felt I'm in a hurry against the clock, that the clock is always ticking. And I'm, I've just always been very aware of getting older. And I, I remember when I was 18 and I was graduating high school and I pulled out an Elton John album that was one of the first albums I'd ever bought, I think, when I was 11 years old. Uh, it was the album Caribou, and I was staring at the cover, and I was just struck with how quickly the time had gone from 11 to 18 and how much had changed, and yet I can remember as an 11-year-old um, taking off the shrink wrap on that album for the first time, and it didn't seem that long ago to me, and it, it really freaked me out in a way that I still remember. And uh, that just kind of intensified this race against the clock. I feel like 
ever since I finished my sophomore year in high school, once I became a junior, the, the clock, has, time has just been racing. Uh, a year feels like just a, a few months, and it continues to be that way. And as we get older, we can feel like we've, we've missed our chance, that we're too old to do something. And singing, listen, if you want to be in a boy band, then yeah, if you're over the age of um, 25, then you're likely too old. But, but singing, people should sing for their entire lives. People should experience this joy of communicating with others. And you can always get better. Sure, as you get older, um, as you go into old age, your, your instrument will begin to degrade just as the body does. However, when you look at older people and you see those that have taken care of themselves versus those who have not, there are wildly different outcomes in health, and there can be wildly different outcomes in vocal health. And if you are older and thinking about starting this journey, it's not too late. You can improve, you can get better, you can extend uh, the health span of your voice, you can build strength, you can build endurance, you can build range, you can perform, you can bring joy to others. This isn't all about getting a record deal. This is, this is about the pure human experience of just music and communication. And it's wonderful and beautiful. And don't let ideas of age keep you from it. Uh, the other one I hear a lot, especially in people who are just starting to sing, I don't like the sound of my voice. And this is something that you have to get over. We get, we get so self-critical. First of all, you haven't heard your voice recorded enough. And I've talked in this podcast about how we hear our voice differently than others do. The sound is traveling away from us. We're hearing our voice more on reflections than direct input. Um, we're hearing a certain amount through the bone we're not getting a clear picture of what we sound like. So when you hear your voice recorded back, it's often a shock. Second, learning to get a better tone out of your voice is part of learning to sing. Anyone, no matter how beautiful their voice is, is also able to sing badly. They can make their voice sound awful. They can make their voice sound thin. They can make their voice sound dull. You can do all kinds of things to your voice, but great singers have found through uh, vowel shading and tuning and uh, regist registration of the voice and, and getting everything balanced, they found ways to make their voice sound optimal. And they found different variations of this so that the voice just doesn't have one sound. You can do this. It's not that your voice has to sound like Pavarotti. Your voice sounds like you, but you can find the best version of you. And I promise everyone I've ever heard, everyone's voice can sound good in their own way, unless there's some uh, terrible physical damage. And even damaged voices can sound cool. <clears throat> oh, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right on cue. Uh, there, my voice wants to get a little froggy. But even damaged voices can sound really cool. Uh, don't stress out about this. Work and develop your voice. Find all the different colors. You will find where your voice sounds best. And you're singing for other people. You're not singing for yourself. And on a side note, this perfectionist thing, I've talked about this before, drop it. There's no perfection in singing. Perfection is just fear. It's just a mechanism to, to stop you from moving forward, to stop you from exposing yourself to others and from sharing and opening, opening yourself up to uh, criticism. Then people will stress uh, on range. I don't have enough range. This is another common um, block that people will think, I, I can't sing until I have this wide range. And of course, 
Expanding your range is part of learning to sing. It's what we work on in voice lessons. But it doesn't stop you from singing. There are plenty of songs that you can sing as you build your range. If you're writing songs, you write to your voice. And as your range expands, you can expand uh, the range of your songs. But range in and of itself is, is not the point. And we tend to use this as scorekeeping uh, with singers. How high can you sing? How high can you sing? And that seems to be the standard of whether you're a good singer or not. And it's not at all. I've seen people get obsessed with range and then forget or, or set aside working on the more important things such as your tone, your musicality, your ability to sing legato and connect tones and uh, holding beautiful sustains with vibrato and fixing uh, those vocal uh, breaks, those transitions. That's where the real singing's done, not on the super high stuff. That, that can be great. And again, you should always be working all aspects of your voice and range is certainly part of it, but it's not the end all be all. If you don't have the range that you want, it should not stop you from singing. It should not stop you from going out there and singing and singing for others in small gatherings, in karaoke, open mic nights, um, regional uh, musical theater. There are all kinds of songs and all kinds of roles that will fit uh, your voice. You just got to find them. Another one, and, and this, is, this is terrible. This is a terrible one. The idea of, well, I'm not as good as X. I'm not as good as this singer or that singer, so therefore I shouldn't sing. And yeah, there are going to be those voices that nature has just blessed. They've, they've blessed with the, the physicality. They've blessed with musicality. They've, they've blessed uh, with a work ethic. They've blessed that they were born in the right place and were able to get the right education, whether it was formal or they were, they were in the right music program or church or had the right parents or around other musicians. And all of these elements came together and we get people such as Freddie Mercury and Whitney Houston and Luciano Pavarotti and, and Barbara Streisand. We, we get these world-class voices that uh, very few of us will measure up to. But if you go, uh, I would say the record store showing my age, but if you go on Spotify you will see plenty more artists getting lots of plays who don't have that level of voice. You don't need to sound like this person or that person. Comparison is a trap. It's again, it's this idea of perfectionism. It becomes this excuse. You're excusing your fear through, well, I, I don't sound like this person, so I shouldn't sing. You, you can sing. You can sing in your own way. It's a beautiful individual art form. Now, if you're going for something and you say, I want to be Alphaba in Wicked, then yes, there are certain demands and you have to be able to sing and sound reasonably like the other people who have come uh, before you in that role. Uh, that it's a very different sound than if you're going to be doing the sound of music. Um, so yes, in those circumstances, but then again, you don't have to be uh, as good as the best person who's ever done the role, right? I mean, we could sit and arguably there's probably one person who did that role better than anyone else. And you could argue it's Idina Menzel because she... Uh, basically was the first, she was the first person to do the role. So she, you can hold her as the gold standard. And there are those that, that rise to her level. And there's those who've done the role who aren't quite at their, her level, but they bring other strengths to it. And you are going to bring your own strengths. So don't fall into this comparison trap. And then the last one, and I've talked about this one before, 
This is the one that will stop you before you ever sing for anyone. And it is fear of criticism. And I've said it before, the one superpower I could grant you, if I could, would be not caring what other people think. Great performers don't care what you think in that, listen, they love to be loved and they love the applause. And if they went out and nobody liked what they did, uh, that may be a different story. But every performer, there are people who don't like what they do. I did a recent uh, YouTube analysis video of um, uh, Adam... Oh my gosh, I'm going to I'm going to blank on his name. Adam Lambert. I don't know why Adam Sandler just suddenly popped in my mind, but I couldn't get Sandler out of my head. Adam Lambert and at the Kennedy Center Honors um he sang Believe uh for Share. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's technically beautiful. My gosh, he has just such fantastic sounding vocal folds and, and he has such control over the amount of, of compression and how he brings his folds together. And even when he brings in different elements of distortion and intensity, you just hear this beautiful buzzing of the folds going on all the time. And there are people in the comment section who just are attacking his technique or attacking him as a singer. And I just don't get it. And, and there are certain, and of course, there are people attacking me for talking about Adam Sandler. Uh, but uh, I don't get it. And I don't engage with those people because they're, they're just clueless. And at, he can't care what they think either. And he stepped into a really, really tricky situation um, in Queen and taking over uh, for the late Freddie Mercury. Those are huge shoes to fill. And Adam doesn't try and fill those shoes. What he does is he just helps bring the Queen experience to new audiences who really, really want to hear this music. And he does it in his own way while still paying tribute uh, to Freddie. And it's absolutely wonderful. But there are people who are just up in arms and don't want to hear him doing those songs. And the Freddie fans are rabid. I mean, I did uh, the YouTube video on Freddie, and that is the, the most vicious comments that I got was um, doing, uh, was, was from the, the Freddie Mercury fans. And they're just really protective, and they're really rabid. And um, it, it's really difficult. And I know he must get criticism for that, but you, you can't let that stop you. You can't let that fear. Why, why would you give anyone the power to stop you from singing, to stop you from doing something you love? If you love to sing, that should be enough. It really should. And if you get joy from that, and it breaks my heart, the people who have been criticized by choir teachers back when they were in junior high, and now they're coming to me in their, their 40s because they've never lost that singing, but they're, they've been afraid for decades because of some stupid offhand comment from, from a frustrated choir director. And it, it still eats at them. And I've, I've seen them in tears begin to talk about it. It's, it's terrible. Don't give someone that power. Listen, the clock is ticking. Tick tock from the when you started listening to this podcast, that time is gone. It's gone forever. And every moment is gone forever. You only have so much time. And you should spend a good chunk of it doing what you love, doing what makes you feel alive. And if singing is that that for you, then no one should take that from you. Take back your power. And don't let anyone rob you of this joy. Hey, if you want to know more about me, please visit my website, johnhenny.com. And if you are interested in training to be a voice teacher, 
uh, come join me in my Contemporary Voice Teaching Academy, Voice Teacher Academy. Just go to my website, johnhaney.com, and click on Teacher Training in the menu. Um, I will tell you, the price is about to go up. Um, somewhat substantially and very soon. I've, I've kept the price low uh, just as the, the course has gotten going. It's a, it's a monthly membership, and it's, but it's, it's starting to catch on, and uh, I'm going to be especially raising where I um, give you personal uh, coaching. Uh, which you get right now with the basic membership, but I'm going to split that off into a more expensive uh, tier. So if you join up, I will give you uh, personal coaching on your business and growing your studio uh, through email. So just go to johnhaney.com and click on the teacher training. Also, be sure to sign up for my email list. And until next time to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.